if that's true, then equities are wildly overvalued. That's true. That's true. It is true. <laughs> okay. You, you would think Bitcoin would But be- then I would think that crypto would be wildly overvalued too. Yeah. So billionaire investor Dan Moorhead, CEO of Pantera Capital, an American hedge fund that specializes in cryptocurrencies, currently with $4.2 billion in assets under management, gave such interesting perspective on where the crypto market and the stock market are headed in 2024. Let's talk crypto in just a second, but let's talk about bonds because it very well may be that the bond market uh, will have an impact, I imagine, uh, on crypto. But where, where do you really think we're headed? And what does this next 12 months look like to you, given, given what we've even seen in the last week? Yeah, I think we have a failure of imagination that all working age people have never traded in a rising rate environment. I, was, uh, I came to Wall Street in the 80s and it was already six years into a 40 year bull market. And everything gets bailed out by the Fed lowering rates for the last 40 years. We're in a different regime. Because with core inflation still so high and a whole generation of younger investors today that haven't lived through a high interest rate increasing environment, for the last 40 years, interest rates have primarily been trending down. All working age people have never traded in a rising rate environment. I, was, uh, I came to Wall Street in the 80s and it was already six years into a 40 year bull market and everything gets bailed out by the Fed lowering rates for the last 40 years, we're in a different regime. And the rates, uh, two years ago, I predicted when Fed funds were zero and the long, uh, the 10 year was 1.3, they both go to five at least, we're here. I think they're going higher. The normal real rate for the Fed is uh, 1% over inflation. We're not even there yet. Right. Um, wage inflation is double the Fed's target. We have record labor strikes going on right now. Uh, so the Fed has to keep doing more. And the 10 year note is right now we're flat to Fed funds. It's typically a, a premium. It's typically at right. 2% above inflation. Earlier today. And again, this is all projecting that both the inflation rate and the core inflation rate in the US is gonna be stickier for longer, meaning for the Fed, rates are gonna stay higher for longer. Inflation. Earlier today, but we had a guy on from Jake Bob Michael said that, in, that inflation's, what, what are you saying inflation is now? You're, what number are you using? Well, so core inflation is 4.4, which is right. more than double the stable prices right. that the Fed uses. He said which, inflation's already at a point where rates are too high. That's what he was saying. Oh, inflation, they're supposed to keep it under 2%, and it's at 4.4, and right. wage inflation is 4.5, and increasing. Right, the question is, when you have, you know, like a Barry Sterling will tell you that, like, real, what he would call right. real inflation, <clears throat> he would think is, when, when you really calculate the full thing, he would say, we're already there. Yeah. And the question is whether you think the Fed well, either thinks we're already there or you think even think that's real. Already at 2%? Yeah. Because, so the funny thing is there's an owner's equivalent rent thing in inflation, and it takes two years to fully play through. Hmm. And even if houses stayed stable for the next two years, it'll still go up 1.1%, according to the Atlanta Fed. So there's still a lot more inflation from two years ago that's piped in. And the Case-Shiller Home in right. Index is still at record high. So if you're right, we're talking about increased rates not nobody lowering rates in the next 12 months yeah is, i mean yeah and maybe for several years right like i think that's what people are having a hard time thinking about is rates could stay up for five or okay well years. if that's true then equities are wildly overvalued that's true dan moorhead is projecting that the federal reserve will have to keep rates again higher for longer possibly for several years. Yeah, and maybe for several years, right? Like, I think that's what people are having a hard time thinking about. And he's not saying that a recession would last that long, but he is saying this is a different paradigm in markets, in the economy, compared to the last 40 years. Well, if that's true, then equities are wildly overvalued. That's true. That's true. It is true. <laughs> okay. You, you would think Bitcoin would But be. then I would think that crypto would be wildly overvalued too. Yeah. So uh, equities probably are overvalued because the PE is, the same level it was when rates were crashing, but now rates are much higher. And if you took the normal equity risk premium for equities onto a 5% 10 year note, they should be 23% lower than today. Wait, equities should be 23% yes. lower today? And if talking you talking about took the S&P? The S&P, yeah. And if you took it compared to its 50 year average of equity risk premium, be 43% lower. And I'm not saying 43 is gonna happen, but we gotta keep in mind, there have been two 13 year periods that equities didn't go up. Mm -hmm. in the 2000s and in the 70s, 80s. We could see that. You think 23% is going to happen, if not 43? I think, I think equities are going to go down for the next few years. And then, of course, what does that mean for Bitcoin, for crypto? And that's why crypto is relevant, because 
it's not tied to interest rates, and that's pretty it, rare, right? It, it, it kind it of is, is tied to yeah. risk. I mean, you, you need the Fed opening the spigots for for, for Bitcoin to go up. That, well, the Fed opening the spigots in 2020 was unambiguously wonderful for anything that had a fixed quantity. It hasn't been an inflation hedge. Yeah. So the 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 thought is it was highly correlated last year, and the. What? So Bitcoin is a proxy like for risk risk on. NASDAQ is what risk, it's risk on. Yeah, right. so it was a very risk on asset until the middle of last year. But I think that was correlated with or connected to a lot of super highly levered things like BlockFi, Celsius, you know, FTX. And those are once in a generation weird right. occurrence there in the past. And this year, the correlation of Bitcoin to the S&P 500 is only 0.2. Mm -hmm. Historically, it's 0.1. So what so, is it correlated to then? So it's, it's like, some people call it digital gold because it's kind of its own thing. It's not interest rate related. Uh, obviously bonds are interest rate related, mathematically, equities. So is Dan Moorhead crazy or is he the smartest guy in the room? Real estate. I think people are waiting for a cut. <clears throat> and every time they think there might be a cut and, and the Fed starts easing again, that's when Bitcoin goes because it's fiat becomes less, uh, less valuable. I agree. It is definitely cyclically connected to things like that. Okay. But my overall view is we're in a 20-year secular bull market in blockchain, right? It's a very transformative technology. It's going to change so many different things. And so, yeah, you know, it does squiggle a little bit with what the but Fed is that does. My take on all this is it's incredibly risky to hold Bitcoin. It's even riskier to hold crypto, but it's riskiest not to hold any at all. I think that equities could come down 23% or maybe should just based on historic valuations. Where do you think Bitcoin should be valued? Yeah, so it's a great question. Is We talk to asset allocators all the time. If you're thinking, put money to work in bonds, I think that's pretty dangerous. Put money to work in real estate. Real estate is probably coming off all-time highs. Uh, equities, I think, are overvalued. That does leave a couple of asset classes like real commodities uh, and blockchain. Blockchain is a trillion-dollar asset class. So most institutions have essentially zero exposure right now. Uh, they should, you know, dial it up to a couple percent. Which gets Bitcoin itself to what level? I mean, if it's 27.7 now. Well, Bitcoin has a 14 year trend growth of 145 percent a year. That's kind of my general forecast. it will just research that and every year it'll more than double. Every year it'll more than double. It's been doing it for 14 years on it's average. Done. Obviously, <clears> so some some nothing else is close. Uh, if it's digital gold, when does it become like gold and hit a... And, and never go up again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's funny. It's like 20 years when everybody has it. Right now, you know, most institutions really have essentially, a, you know, zero exposure. Be sure to click subscribe for daily updates, keeping you informed about crypto. And make sure you come out to Venice, California tonight for the roast of Crypto NDO. And next week in Amsterdam at the Bitcoin conference, link down below. Uh, but the other cryptos are very important, you know. Um, there's a project called Arbitrum that's helping scale other cryptos. Ethereum's worked really well. They did an emerge last year. Nothing happened. They changed software for 200 million people overnight and it all worked.